Today, I'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks for terraforming in Minecraft, so you can go from something like this to this. Now, all of these tips I'm going to give you are things I use whenever I wanna start a new terraforming project in a Minecraft, and implementing them have a really helped me. The first tip, and probably the most important, I think, is that it will never be perfect. So many times I will watch another Minecraft creator build some amazing mountain or some cool tree, and I will get really discouraged because mine never looks like theirs. But you have to remember that in nature, nothing is perfect. Everything is random. So when you go to build a tree and maybe one of the branches looks weird to you, that's totally okay. It even gives that tree a little bit of character. The next tip that I find a lot of people for some reason avoid is use the already generated land. I often see people flattening an entire area to make something or they just build a giant mountain in the middle of a plains biome. And while this can look very cool, Using what you already have can make it look a lot more natural and it will fit in better with everything around it. You may find a small hill while walking in your Minecraft world and instead of flattening it, you can use it as a template. Fix any of the parts that might look weird, then find a way to add a path. This will make all of your terraforming projects fit in very well with the world around it. Now, let's say you found a small hill and you want to terraform it and you want to add a path. The next tip is don't overthink paths. Some people try way too hard to make a giant path and add tons of texture, and when this is done right, it can look really cool. But for most terraforming projects, just using grass paths and some coarse dirt is going to do the trick. Look at the landscape and first envision where you might want the path. And then you can place down some grass paths until you have a nice shape. Then make it wider if you want and add in some coarse dirt for some texture. And then just by adding some plants around it, you have a very nice easy path. Sometimes simplicity is better. Now that you have a path, you might want to add a small mountain near it or a cliff. So this next tip is don't be afraid to use non-stone type of blocks. I have recently been trying to do this more and even implemented it in my survival world where I used light gray wool with stone and andesite. This is a great way to get more unique textures in your mountain and can help with shading and finding the perfect color. Don't get me wrong, the stone blocks in Minecraft are great, but sometimes using different blocks will make it look so much better. In these two examples, I used packed mud and brown mushroom blocks with granite and bone blocks and mushroom stems with calcite to make a more unique and colored textured mountain. This will add variety to your world and make every mountain and cliff just seem much more interesting. Okay, so you just made a cliff and now it's time to add trees. When it comes to trees, it's very important to understand scaling. If you want to make your mountain or cliff appear bigger and be the main focus, then do not build giant trees. If you make a giant tree, it's going to make your cliff look really small and not impressive. But if you build a ton of smaller trees, it's going to make the mountain stand out and appear much bigger. In my survival world, I used a ton of these small trees at the bottom of the cliff, and it definitely helps make the cliff seem much bigger, as opposed to if I built a giant tree. Scaling is very important and can help enhance your terraforming project. Now that you have a path, a mountain, and some trees, it's time to add some life to your scenery. The best way to do this is just by adding plants and different foliage. Add leaves on the ground to look like bushes and maybe even small rocks. Adding in some animals is also a great way to add more life and nature to your builds. You can also add man-made things like lampposts or even wagons. This will help make the path feel more traveled on and make your world feel more alive. A great example of this is this small tent I added in my survival world right along this path. Try to tell a story with what you add in the landscape. You can add a cart that fell over and maybe have it in the middle of the path, telling a story of a traveler that lost all of his supplies and hasn't been able to pick it up. This adds more personality to the world and adds more stuff to look at. Another great way to bring your terraforming project to life is by adding small details. Go around and add some stone buttons as small stones, and add stone or mossy cobblestone stairs in the ground and fill them up with water to make small puddles. Small details will make every part of the build interesting, so no matter if you are looking at it from afar or up close, there's something to look at and enjoy. 
Now, let's say you look at your mountain and something kinda seems off and you wanna fix it. So you go to replace a block and when you break it, you fall in and you land in the middle of 10 creepers and boom, you're dead. When building cliffs or mountains that might be hollow, please fill them up with torches or other light sources. This will save you from the pain of falling into a mob infested mountain and will prevent you from hearing zombies 24-7. <laughs> Okay, now everything is starting to look really good. The next tip is to avoid patterns. So now go around and look for any kind of patterns that might make your build look unnatural. This also includes any straight lines. If you see that the grass forms a straight line that is more than about six to seven blocks, you might wanna change it so it doesn't look too out of place. Because like I said before, everything in nature is random. So avoid having anything look like it's repeating, whether that be trees, rock formations, or grass. So now you pretty much have everything done. It's looking great, but if you wanna go even further, you can add even more texturing. This final tip is knowing how to texture and what to texture. Some of the most common ways I like to texture an area is by mixing in some moss with grass and adding some coarse dirt and packed mud near any water sources. You can even mix up the leaves of the trees to add more variation. But remember not to overdo it. If you add too much texture, it will become too busy and look really weird. Here we are in a Minecraft world, and I thought it'd be even better if I kind of walk through some of these things and give you guys even more simple, small tips and tricks for when you're building and terraforming in Minecraft. So let's say you found this nice cliff right here, which actually looks really cool, but let's say you found this nice cliff and you want to make a nicer cliff. The first thing I would do is grab your base material, the material you want most of the mountain to be. So for this case, we're gonna use stone. Then I'm gonna find a base point for this cliff. And I think we'll do it right about here at this block. And then now we're just gonna build up. And for a cliff, you're gonna want it to go in a little bit. And then at the top, you can have it go out. And then kind of step back and look at it and see if it's going in the right direction of what you want. And if it is, you can start building more of it. So now if you wanna add more to the cliff, you can start building up next to it, but make it different. So not all of them are gonna be the same shape. And now once I have a nice little cliff design that I'm liking, it's time to make it a little more detailed. So first I would go ahead and add some stairs and slabs to mix it in with the stone. And then once you're happy with that, you can add some different variation. And I like adding andesite in random areas. I also like to use tough, but I kind of make it in like a line just to look like a different type of rock is in the mountain and it formed kind of slanted. And now your cliff is detailed and it's looking good. But to make it look even better, go to the top and start adding some leaves and have some of them hanging down the mountain. Then you can go ahead and bone meal the top of it. And just like that, you have a very cool detailed cliff and it's super easy. Now the next thing I wanna show you is when it comes to making rivers and streams. So first I'm gonna find a nice area I wanna put and I wanna put one right here. And then I'm going to make one single line and get a good idea of where I want the river to go. And it's kind of best to use odd numbers and avoid any really long straight lines. And then once you have your nice shape, it's time to expand it. And then for this example, we're gonna use a really small stream, but we're still gonna make it another layer deep so we can break more dirt down here. Then for the bottom of the river, you can add some coarse dirt and packed mud. And then once you have that, you can add your water. And then all you have to do is bone meal the bottom and add some seagrass. Now that we have the river looking nice, we need to fix the outside of the river. And realistically, there's probably not gonna be grass growing right along here. So we can grab some more coarse dirt and you can mix in some packed mud. And then it's time to add some foliage around it and add some plants along the river. And this will really bring the river to life. And that is how to make a really easy, but simple, good looking river. I really hope these tips and tricks help you guys. And I would love to see what you guys build. So you could join my Discord, the link is in the description, and then once you join, you can head over to the Minecraft build section and send me the pictures of your terraforming projects. I would love to see them, and I really hope you guys enjoy this video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video.